this is what I'm seeing happening out there in the marketplace right now. A lot of you guys are looking for solutions to a particular problem. And generally speaking, that's around, around monetizing your business, around needing some income and some results now. And you're either trying different programs, buying into stuff, you can't afford the high ticket stuff, or you're getting kind of kicked in the mouth and told, hey, this isn't working because of your mindset, right? And you need tactics that are actually cutting edge and proven and get results quickly. And you need results, right? And then as most of you guys probably know, if you're getting beat up about your mindset, you know, you probably think, hey, once I actually deliver some results and gain some confidence, the mindset's going to shift along with that. And I kind of agree with that to an extent. I, I think a lot of that's to be said. So I want to show you some of the cutting edge tactics and approaches that are working right now on really honing in your messaging and being clear and and, you know, dialing into the research. When I realize when I've reverse engineered what students and consumers aren't getting out of the current coaching and programs and courses and things out there is number one, they're not doing the right research for your offer. They say they're going to build out everything and build out your funnel, but there's just not enough research done. So they actually know your target audience, your offer, your niche, your verbiage, right? And so the research is overlooked in many aspects. And if your message is never dialing in, then when they build you that full acquisition system and funnel, it's either not working and not acquire, attracting people or it's attracting the wrong people. And you're like, oh, still throwing your hands up because it got overlooked or they overlook quality and they just send you leads, but they're not actually buyers or people um, that can afford your service or even, you know, in the market looking for your product, your solution, you know, your service. So those are what we're really going to dive into. And I want to show you some tactical approaches and things. So like number one, People always ask about creating engagement, right? And let's just go through a real quick exercise for, again, fast results, tactics that we can implement right away. And guys, take some notes if you're watching this. But if we had literally one week to move the needle as fast as possible, what would the focus be? And if you follow this quick four steps, this will actually move the needle in your business. Number one, how to create knowledge gaps that generate curiosity and open the loop. I'm going to dive into that if you're not sure what that means. Um, number two, the ability to turn knowledge gaps and engaging story-based content. I'm sorry, the ability to turn knowledge gaps into engaging story-based content for you, to use, for you to use in posts, bios, ads, right? People that join our challenge, I'm going to actually be writing bios for some of them, um, and it's going to increase exactly uh, their credibility, but it's also going to increase the response rate when they have new people hitting their profile. That's what a dialed-in bio, bio will do, tagline, whatever. Um, number three, knowing how to identify congregation points of prospects and where your audience is hanging out. So you can always identify pools of prospects to engage. Super important. And then number four, being able to fire at will, create engagements and generate conversations. Right. So when we do that, you know, we're going to kind of go through these four things right here. How to engage the prospects crock brain. Again, I'll touch on that here quickly. And I don't want to make this a long video using knowledge gaps and success framework. How to optimize your assets the right way, the proper way, the, the way so they actually convert. Right. Um, how to identify problem based congregation points. Very important. Reverse engineering a group authority sequence um, that you can use, whether you're the small guy just starting out with no testimonials or whatever um, to generate, you know, eight point appointments per a week from a single group, actual tangible results that we can get quickly, right? How to automate this using a resource that we've already bought a license for you. Actually, that one wouldn't be included in this particular um, free aspect, but that was in one of our paid courses that we offered in the past. And this is what I was talking about with the crop brain and the messaging and understanding and the foundations is there's three different levels to the brain. There's the reptilian or the croc brain. There's the limbic or referred to as the midbrain. And then there's the neocortex or the more rational thinking aspect of your brain for those more analytical people. And understanding these and when and how to engage these parts of the brain for your copy and your message to actually convert is super, super important. Okay, so really quickly, let me scroll down to the next one I want to dive into. And since I just talked about it a little, um, let's dive into knowledge gaps so you guys understand. And again, I'm going to keep this super quickly, but I want you guys to have some content you can, uh, again, implement and execute quickly to get results, right? So how to create a knowledge gap? Let's just go through the basic understanding of this three-point uh, framework. Number one, identifying the specific problem or challenge that your prospect is facing. Number two, break down the counterintuitive problem and create what we call the unexpected solution. Super important. And we do this in everything we do. Uh, number three, put these together to create what's called a knowledge gap sequence. So really quickly, 
this is your prospect right now, kind of always in defense mode, wearing this suit of armor, right? Um, they've been burnt by other agencies, service consultants. You know, a lot of you guys watching could probably relate. They're constantly being spammed with BS pitches, DMs, cold emails, et cetera, et cetera, right? So we help our clients and we show people how to map out their own knowledge gaps through a process similar to what you're seeing on my screen. Then we pick out the one entry point that's going to create the massive engagement. Which one is either going to be the biggest impact, the biggest unexpected solution, or is possibly usually where we get this one is which one's going to hit the biggest demographic of our audience right um and and dial that really in and scamp that and, and ramp that up and scale that one out you know usually out of the knowledge gaps we achieve they're all going to be helpful in your messaging and i'll make that make sense if you go through any of our further content again this is a quick overview but that main one is usually the one we're going to really scale up into campaigns or turn into paid ads in some cases which i'll talk about here but um in this case let's say the challenge is breaking past 25k months let's say the real problem is people don't how to know how to scale organic prospecting process um, and they jump to paid too soon which is a big thing so the unexpected solution here would be what if i could teach a sales team how to crush organic marketing to scale past 25k um, in essence your tagline or your bio could then be something like i help agencies scale past 25k months by teaching their sales team how to generate their own leads organically um, super, super impactful if it's done right. So again, there's the biggest struggle there in red, then the unexpected solution in right, I'm sorry, in green, put them together and we get the overall knowledge gap sequence. So that's just a quick little overview. Now, once you have your knowledge gap, you can begin building tons and tons of content. So let's drive down to more about the messaging and um, I'm going to dive into what's known as our eco framework. And once we've kind of done their knowledge gap, that would be the second A in this particular framework. We can kind of assess the situation. And when we've already laid this out and they've responded to it, it'll make more sense right here. Um, we go through the rest of the framework. So ECO stands for engage, assess, assign, call to action and obligation. As you see right there, let me explain a little further. We're going to engage the crock brain. We're going to assess the real problem. Then we're going to assign the frame. Then we're going to lay out a call to action and a obligation or accountability, holding them accountable. So we really assess Assess, you know where they're at to find the real problem what happens when we speak with a lot of prospects is they give us a symptom or a surface level problem like hey Ray I just need more leads generally speaking that's not the real problem they need a higher quality of leads they need to be able to convert the leads that they're getting before I turn on the faucet and flood their pipeline with more there's a lots of other things so we need to assess and really um, diagnose right and then a gap or a buying pocket um, will kind of occur when we do this so um, are they person a or person b every prospect can be kind of split into a binary sequence right we could say this is the and i would like to do that by like less sophisticated entry level more sophisticated already established right let's just say that's prospect a and b and we can really quickly drop them into a box and we're going to say a different knowledge gap to each of those people right if i say how to scale your business once you've already got clients to a guy that's never landed a client and it's just starting out, that's not going to make sense. And vice versa, how to land your first client or make your first 10K month. If I say that to somebody that's already um, profitable and in revenue and has clients, that's not going to resonate. So once we've acknowledged their problem, we assign a new frame showing them that the real problem or showing them the real problem. And that now makes them problem aware through our sequence, um, which will make more sense when I dive into you know another segment here. Um, and this is kind of the formula that we walk them through. Um, number one, permission. If you don't have permission by them first, engaging engaging them and acknowledging their problems, they will not listen. So that's number one. Um, number two, the real problem. You must diagnose a real problem or a negative mechanism, which is really holding them back. Three, the knowledge gap, which we discussed a little. Um, but which knowledge gap is the one we want to use to create intrigue with this particular prospect and not be somebody just asking questions like you are interviewing or, you know, pre-vetting them. Like people don't like that. And angst is always good. What's the cost of doing no nothing or the cost of inaction? So once we've kind of done that, we would, you know, give them a call to action. Once a frame um, is assigned, booking a call is kind of easy to, to schedule the next steps. And then we would take them into the obligation, which leads into our micro commitment process will be one of the last two things we cover here real quickly. Um, but last thing on this slide, remember, whether it's Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Reddit, paid ads, organic emails, eco applies. You might even engage them in a slightly different way, but it is the same fundamentals. And you will definitely email would be like different than, um, you know, on a social media platform. It's a little different approach, but you're ultimately doing the th same thing. I 
show you some great examples where we've done that in email copy. I think I'm going to skip over the ads portion for now, but I can show you very quickly if you guys want and DM me about kind of the graph we set up and how we map out exactly what you need in terms to scale ads, um, how many unique angles, how many different audiences. And we have that all mapped out into kind of an ad machine um, mural board. And that all ties into what I'm talking about here with the messaging. But I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. I have two more areas to cover super quickly. And please tell me there's not one thing you can't take out of this that you can go implement. So I want to go down and something I talk about pretty passionately. And I say I don't see in a lot of other programs and the thing they kind of hold back. Right. I know a lot of people watching probably feel like, hey, you know, I work with a lot of people that know what they know, but they're not really trying to help me like they're holding something back They're They're in it to to grab my money and teach something, but not teach me that secret sauce that I need to get over the hump. So this is what I noticed that is in a lot of these coaching and training companies, something that they're doing internally in terms of research and understanding their sophistication level. And they're really dialing that in and honing their message into that different objectives and different products and different messaging to different sophistication levels. But then they're not teaching that. So really quickly, let's run through the sophistication level training and the lead types. That's going to be really important. You guys, if you've been in marketing, you may or may not be aware that this is kind of the holy Bible of copywriting. Um, this book called Breakthrough Ad Advertising by Eugene Schwartz. Schwartz, sorry. So Again, to understand sophistication, let's think what the customer already knows, right? Are they aware that the problem or solution or do they need education? Um, and then it'll help us kind of define what type of content or what type of lead type is going to be the best. Example, most people know they need to lose weight, but do they not know is they can do it faster by doing X, right? So like we start with what they know and then we kind of lead them a breadcrumb trail down to the, you know, the making them a little more problem aware of they don't know, right? So that's why I said the most important to ask is what does your customer already know? Let's start there at the basic level. And then once we determine the sophistication level, that's really half the battle. Then we can easily identify what lead we'll be using for our ad. So this is going to show you six different lead types that once I say this and you guys understand this, you can go back to every email you've received, every ad, every social media post, especially the ones that get a lot of engagement. And once you get this, you can see which lead type they used and why it worked. And this was the biggest thing with me making organic work. I was good at organic. Once I figured out sophistication level and lead types, everything changed in terms of you know results. So um, this is kind of going from, from last to first. This tells you the different lead types. And you guys can pause the screen. I've left it on there long enough for anybody to probably read it while I'm talking. But I'm going to cover this more through the graph. That's a few slides below. And I want to go backwards. I want to start with number six and lead to number one. And there's a very specific reason. So again, if I, if I flew past that, just feel free to go back and pause really briefly and read that out. But I'm going to cover that anyhow. So identifying what lead to get an indication of what the customer already knows. And then we can understand their sophistication level, right? Um, so the goal is to identify the sophistication level based on what lead even in a lot of cases our competitors are using. Definitely. So this is a graph I was talking about. And the six I mentioned before that went forward to backwards is story leads to offer leads. Now I'm going to start with story leads and label that number one. And you'll see above it correlates to a different awareness or sophistication level of your prospects. Once you guys can can really grasp this graph. Sorry for the tongue twister. Um, this is going to make a lot of sense, but let's just correlate this audience at the top, this, this awareness level or sophistication level to your audience. So let's go through these really quick. Unaware means they know nothing about you. It's probably a cold friend request you just sent. Maybe somebody you, you briefly engaged with in a group, but had no real content back and forth. Very unaware of, in this case, let's say I'm talking about me. They're very under, unaware of Ray, my story and what I do, right? They know nothing about me. Problem aware is somebody that actually knows they have a problem. And let's use a very basic one that is probably most prevalent. My Facebook ads are profitable or are converting or my you know cost per acquisition has gone way up, right? They realize there's a problem. Problem, but they're not really sure of solutions yet. Solution aware means you're actively getting hit with offers and searching out different solutions, right? You're starting to find out now, you know, most problem aware are only aware of the mainstream solution. All right, my Facebook ads suck. I need to hire an agency, right? And that may be the solution for them. In most cases, it's not, it's not especially if they have an in-house expertise or team doing that, right? They might just need a course. So 
Now, when they start to become solution aware, they start to realize there's these done for you. There's this do it yourself. There's this done with you. And there's different solutions. When they take it a step further is when they're actually hopping on sales calls and visiting landing pages. They're looking at the different products. How much is it done for you? How much is it done with? What's the difference in deliverables and features, right? And they're starting. And most aware is an audience that is likely been a committed follower of yours. They've been on your page, your timeline for a few weeks or months, or you're making them more aware. And I'll, I'll make that make sense throughout your conversation and throughout your micro commitment process, which is the last thing I have to dive into here today, guys. And I have six minutes to wrap this up. I'm already going a little long, uh, but hopefully this is this is significantly helpful. Um, so let's get through this really quickly, right? But most aware is somebody I could just go to with an offer. Hey, man, I just launched this awesome new five-day challenge. Let me know if you're interested. Here's the details. Like those people already know me. They know my expertise. I've built up rapport, No, like trust, right? So those people I can go to direct again with offer leads. But if I was to make an offer lead, hey man, join my new challenge. If somebody's unaware and never knew what I did and knows nothing about me, that person is gonna laugh and ignore. It. I'm not gonna get any reply. And if so, it's gonna be a laugh, right? Like it wouldn't make sense. So I like to say a story lead for an unaware audience. Um, and I have a good formula for how to write story-based content and posts and emails. If you'd like it, let me know and I'll give you that exact formula. I don't have time to go through that, but you guys understand a story lead or an introductory lead, right? A little about your background, get them to know you um, a little bit before we start talking business and solutions, right? Proclamation lead is just a bold statement that kind of disarms the reader. Um, you know, for instance, get this product now or your teeth are likely to fall out, right? Whatever. It's just like a bold proclamation that kind of, again, disarms the reader. People call that also like a pattern interrupt, right? When you see it in video content. Um, problem aware is, again, I kind of covered that. Solution aware, and anyone's like secret leads that falls in between are good for like both audiences. So once you've kind of identified the awareness level or sophistication level of your audience, then you'll know what lead type is most likely to engage them. I would say problem aware, I'd probably go proclamation or secret lead. Solution aware, I'd probably go secret lead or problem solution. Problem solution lead here, I would probably go solution aware and product aware. And this one's actually my favorite and the one I've had the most success with, this one right in between solution aware and product aware. That's when people are in the best buying pocket for one. Um, and two, if you can come in and really utilize this lead type right it really stands out in the market so all that is very simply is let's talk about the mainstream problem um, high Facebook ad costs and lower profitability on campaigns or not profitable, right? Whatever that is. Let's talk about the mainstream solution, hire an agency and they're going to get in there and do it for you and guarantee your results. Now let's kind of point out what's BS about that mainstream solution. And we all know there's a lot of things we can put there. Now let's highlight the unexpected solution and kind of disarm their brain. And they're going to kind of say like, when you go through this process, right? Hey, what Ray just said totally makes sense. Nobody's really mentioned that before. And like, they'll reply, like, how do I find out more, man? Let me know the details. Promise lead is simply a lead that makes a bold promise that usually leads directly into your offer. Could be something like you did in a post or an email. What if I could show you how to get 10 quality book calls on your calendar in the next 30 days, right? And then people ask for more and you can transition. Well, with my offer, we do this, this, and this, right? Or you might have a free lead magnet that shows them how to do it. But it's usually something for people already looking for products and you're going to show them how you can deliver on a promise, either in a lead magnet you know, homework type of tutorial or in your pitch when you're going into your primary offer. So um, understanding those and how to use those is super, super important. Last one, I'm going to go back up and cover that kind of ties into all this. And I got three minutes to break it down is up to slide number 51. Um, I have a whole more in-depth things, but really building out the power of your micro commitment process. And this is your sales process. Now that you've engaged them in posts, organic email, with like whatever marketing we're using and we bring them into the funnel, let's stand out in the prospect journey as well as the co client journey. And that's things a lot, um, a lot of people don't focus on, right? So this is kind of the usual sales method, or I call it the old way. Number one, you did something to get engagement. You, you posted a content, you ran an ad, then you either take them to like a triage conversation, maybe a messenger chat, or maybe to an application form, and then to a sales call. Now, the problem with this is there's so many variables, right? And you guys can, can slow down and, and read these back. It's pretty short sentences, but there's all these variables and what you're thinking is the sales rep, right? So we've designed a micro commitment process that we use in all of our three internal businesses and as well as placed into hundreds and hundreds of client businesses, all of our done for you clients specifically where we build this out. So in the old method, numbers one, three, and six were the steps. So what we injected is number two, four, and five. And these are super, super important. And again, if you guys want the more thorough training just about the micro commitment process, because I got to cut this off in under two minutes, um, feel free to ask and I'll show you the whole video on that. But 
what it enables us to do is now we can go and take feedback of like you couldn't do on this three step process. Like, oh, I'm getting low show rates. I'm getting a lot. Of, I need to think about it. I'm getting really low close percentage because of this objection in this method that you see on my screen. You can't really track it back to like where the problem was and go tweak that. But now we're doing the micro commitment process. And again, here they are. Uh, pause the screen and read those really quick. I'm going to go through them a bit as well. Actually, I'm probably not going to with only one minute here. Um, I'm going to wrap this up, but this is all very relevant stuff. And what I'm showing you here is if the problem here under examples is constant no shows, usually that comes back to my homework assignment. And I didn't create something to either create alignment or create enough intrigue and value that I sent them that really fires them up to show up to the call. And again, my training on micro, micro commitment will go a lot more into understanding that. Um, if I'm getting all past, it usually comes back to the alignment phase, but also it could be we didn't assign the right frame here. Um, and we gotta be very cognizant of that. I talk about that some more. If I'm getting no response whatsoever, it means we never engage them properly or the engagement engaged for a quick second, fell right out of their mind and it wasn't the right person. We probably attracted the wrong person or we're using the wrong engagement if we're seeing a lot of no responses, right? If this is a common thing in the data. Um, you know, this one, uh, frame was never assigned before giving the resource. So, you know, we got the engagement, right? Actually, that's why it's pointing into the new frame. So it's like we got engagement, but we didn't actually get them to accept the new frame or look at the real problem and the real solution as opposed to the symptom level problem. So what happens throughout these six stages, and I explain them much further, six small compounding micro commitments leads to one equal, equals one big high ticket sale on the back end. So that's what I wanted to cover, guys. Let me know anything you could take away. What are you going to implement this from today? And if you want any further resources or tutorials broke down on any of this, this stuff specifically or anything I mentioned, just shoot me a message or comment below wherever you're seeing this.